I need to do another update because it's been weeks again. Uh, I find it hard to sit down and do these updates though because this machine is just working so well and is so much fun to use and learn and create on. So I find it a huge chore almost to go eat even. So I saw a video on Instagram of a guy using his mill as a lathe. I don't know what the proper terminology is. I've seen mill turn and other stuff thrown around. So I was curious if I could do it. And then I had somebody contact me about a product that's well suited to the lathe turn kind of setup. So I decided to go for it. What they want is they wanted to take a piece of 304 stainless and turn it into this. Well, not this one. This one has a feature missing, and also I really screwed it up with the pipe wrench trying to get it off my mandrel. So this is what we're trying to go to. So the best way I could figure was by building a mandrel. This one's out of mild steel because I wanted to see how well it would work first. And threading that mandrel, and then mounting that in the spindle, and running it over the tools to produce this shape. Well, tapping 304. Not easy. So I broke my first tap, which is all right, because I, again, I was just trying to figure out my feeds and speeds with that, those inserts and how crazy I could get when I was trying to do a lip on, lip on it. Uh, but it worked really, really good. Is this the first one? No, that's not the first one. So this is the first one here that I made. This is the first pass. The Z height that I probed in for one of these tools, which I'm gonna go over in a bit, was slightly off, so then the uh, the operations or whatever didn't line up properly, or the profiles, but that's okay, it was the first run. The first one was just to test this mandrel system. The lesson learned is that ID at the top has to be very, very, very precise, and the OD on the mandrel has to be very, very precise, so you don't get that like sloppiness in there. So that was my first lesson learned. Second was uh, you need more than about Oh, half inch, quarter inch to grab. Oh, mandrel. Woo, that's loud with no head for, or uh, earplugs. So then what I did is I grabbed a piece of stainless off of the shelf. No idea what kind of stainless. I think it's 304. It's like the paint said 316, but I don't know. I didn't really find it cut any different than 304. So I made the uh, threads way tighter and then the OD on this is much more precise so that when you're, I think the ID on this one is too tight actually yeah so that one's too tight i can't even get it in there i did I, like i did get it in there but i had a hell of a time getting it off which is why it's all dented and marred up again lesson learned like one to two thousand of tolerance on that zero zero fit mandrel but yeah anyways this puppy worked pretty good so then what i did is i put it in the i put it in an er32 call it a uh, three quarter inch er32 call it and put on the new piece. Woo! That one could have been a little tighter. So then what I do is once the piece is in the tool, so I mount the work piece in the spindle and tool, wow, it's supposed to be tool one slot. Shit. What I do is I mount the workpiece in tool one in the machine, then I run the probing cycle to get the length of the workpiece. So then once it knows the length of that, then, so then I have the Z height offset for the workpiece, then each of the tools is marked in on a G54, G55, G56, G57. Each one's probed in X, Y, and Z. This is probed in in the Z. I make an assumption about the diameter being a few steps larger than it actually is to allow for variance. Adds about, uh, I don't know, was it like 15 seconds per roughing pass to take those extra steps off, but then I don't have to worry about the stock size. I could just put her in and go. So that takes care of telling the machine where everything is, and then it just comes down 
the diffusion stuff, which I'm gonna show you right now. So this is the piece that I'm trying to make. The first thing that I do is a pass through command telling it that the work piece is in tool slot number one. I then spin up the spindle to around 2000 RPM and do the spot drill, if you will, on the end of the pocket with a 5 8 end mill to make space for the boring bar. Once that's done, the boring bar is gonna come in and take care of the inside pocket and this little lip here. And then this tool comes down and rough cuts the profile of it. And I found if you do multiple passes like this, at least two, it produces a much better finish. Same thing on the other end. So then what I needed was a post processor that would take care of it. I found it on the Autodesk forums. There'll be a link in the description of where this is, and this is where I got the post from. It needed heavy modification. I first needed to figure out a way to tell the post what tool was where in the comments section of the tool. So as long as you put in a G55 anywhere in this comment bracket, then that information can be passed along to the post. So this is the dumper, which you get by doing a post-process dumper file. Dumper. It spits out this file, which is literally everything that Fusion 360 is telling your machine to do. So the first thing is I have all my coolants running similarly to the way the Haas, Pro, Haas post, Pro, post Processor does it. So I brought over all the code to do that because I have my my Mr. Auto, Mr. whatever on my M53 relay. So all your other coolants, if you're interested in that, still work. The big thing though is you must turn your setup to turning or mill. If you do not, the post processor will not work. It's going to be looking for this to ensure that what it's doing is not gonna bust all your tools. So then what I did was inside of here, I added a small chunk of code that looks at the tool offset. So right at the beginning of this on section, so in the function, this function here, this on section function, which comes from here. So this is the first start of this section, which is, in this case, is this tool right here. The first tool is the G56, I think, the G55. So this section here, I added a chunk of code that as soon as it's called, it initially opens or pulls the tool comment and looks to see if G54 is located anywhere inside the tool comment for this section. If it does see that, it changes the work offset to that tool. These are all the tools that you can use, which is <laughs> a ton. It then writes that block of code to the G code file and then continues on its way. So then it was just a matter of, in every tool, changing the comment to the correct work offset that matches the real life one. And then in real life, I come down and I probe each one of these tools so I know where they are. And because the spindle's in the work piece, I know that it's gonna come down and into the tool. What's really important when you set it up, however, is that you have the chuck in the right spot. Otherwise, these will not generate properly. I also made sure that my safe Z in real life is way down here as well. Otherwise, it's going to hit the tops of the boring bar or the end mill. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the post. I am going to put a link in the description for my post processor. I'm just gonna call it the Lucas is Busy 
Milturn pro post processor. And yeah, let's go outside and finish what we're doing out in the garage. So now that I showed you how to comment each one of these in Infusion so that the post processor changes the work coordinate system to the correct one. So now I want to talk about why I chose these. So I need to bore out the end of the shift knob for the sticker that's going to go in there. And I needed a flat, a flat surface right down to the center and an end mill center cutting is pretty much the only way I could think of or know how to do it. So I grabbed a 5 8 end mill so that I could use my 12 mil, 10 mil boring bar without issue. Um, it's making a really great surface. Actually, the boring bar is doing a way better surface than I thought it was going to. And now I'm actually pretty much going to wipe out the entire surface that this end mill makes. Okay, so let's talk about the work coordinate systems. As you saw in Fusion, they are labeled out G54, G55, G56, G57 and they're all in there in the comments part of the tool in the tool library and all you have to do is write g56 and it will figure it out the post process will figure it out and change the work coordinate system every time the work piece comes down to uh, use a tool. We've had great success with this so far. It is way more rigid and doing a way better surface than I ever could have imagined. Uh, so let's uh, make some parts. So I just got the offset wrong on the tool. Oops! But that's why I uh, had one of these already on the 3D printer bed finished from like, I don't know, three weeks ago when I did this the last time. So I'll swap it out. 